phones for a few minutes and let me get this rolling and we'll Welcome everybody to tonight's INE Network broadcast. I'm Dr. Lou Jensen and this is our weekly show. We've been getting together as a circle of network of hobbyists into business people now for our eighth year. This is the beginning of our eighth season. And welcome to any of you who are over on YouTube sitting in and watching as well. We gain a person or two just about every time we do our shows and we always have a full Full house in the film strip tonight. We've got a whole circle of our people that participate often and regularly and contribute. And that, I think, is what makes this whole thing work. It's one thing to go after the marketplace on your own as an artist, but it's another thing when you've got successful people who are also helping advise and counsel you on what to do and how to do it as you learn to penetrate the marketplace better. So it's kind of the Artistic Business Academy is what I've called it for a long time. It's a place to help you get a little better every time you go after an account and work in the marketplace. You get a little better at it, a little better at it, a little better at it. That's how I think most businesses succeed. It's usually not a flash in the pan. It's a person who takes it on determinedly and stays with that. So as I open up tonight and share what we've got, um, I put together a show this week because of a circumstance going on in my life that I wanted to participate with all of you. It has always appeared to me that most people when they're trying to figure out how to make their business work better um, you try and come up with your own ideas and your own sequence of things, that's one thing. But if you can get help from those who've climbed the same mountain of success that you're trying to climb, that seems to be a little more productive, a little better way to kind of go at your decision making. But in all of that, there are still times when what you're facing and the circumstances that surround you are either really complex or they're really serious enough that it's just pretty challenging to make a decision. And so when it kind of gets to that point and that moment, then what do you do? It uh, came out of the fact that when we we're having our get-togethers, we've been helping people kind of sustain their dreams since 1983 when the company first got started. And going on now, where I really don't quite know how to advise a person in our network right now. I uh, spent two or three hours uh, a couple of weeks ago with this person trying to figure out what they might could do next. And when you look at the whole life and living circumstance, it's, it's quite a challenge often to face everything that we're responsible for anymore and still try and find some way to manage. And that's when it gets into this damned if you do and damned if you don't category. It's not too hard to get a great idea and you make some great plans and then you start working at those plans and then this happens and that happens. Uh, your kids need help. Your grandkids show up for a few months. A uh, friend gets in trouble. The news can be really bad. The house burns down. My equipment got stolen. There's just about nine million different circumstances that can show up to interfere with what you really would like to do and really would like to accomplish. And when it gets to a point where you're pretty sure you're trapped, you're, you, you can't move one way because of this, you can't move the other way because of that, and you get yourself locked into this damned if you do, damned if you don't kind of category. Now, I always, for the last 30 years of my life, I had Woody Searle and Jack Solomon, who were my mentors, who were very successful in business, both of them. And I could access them and ask for questions and help. And I'm not sure how, how I think it works is you're looking at your soul circumstance and then you're getting feedback from somebody else. Advice and counsel 
from someone who's actually got some experience. You just cannot get yourself out of these places with opinion. And everybody and their dog has opinion. And when you can see that it's tearing the circumstances or tearing your dreams and your hopes to pieces, then what? How do you manage and can you get to a point where you can literally kind of get past that? I don't see why I've got that. Can you guys see? I've got a, a separate side screen up on my screen. Is that is that showing up on your panel too? It is. Yeah. yeah. I wonder where that's come from because I can't isolate. Let me go try and drop the screen and see if I can figure out where that's coming from. There. I did got it. I hit my uh, hit my screen. There we go. Okay, somebody still got their mics open. Yep. Okay, check your mics. Uh the resolution is how to help, and I spent a lot of my day, a lot of my time. I've got all the same responsibilities that uh, everyone else has, but I do spend a lot of time trying to move everyone's lives along and grow people's names and reputation. I don't know how much longer I have in my life, my own life and living journey, but my goal is to try and lift those who want to participate with us, lift their careers and your names and reputations as far up as we possibly can get them. And so I pay attention to opportunity. I really look for avenues that will help and ways will help. But this time, this one has really thrown me because it's uh, a set of circumstances that I've never faced before. I don't understand what's going on a thousand percent on top of that. And so I this concept of getting caught where it's damned if you do, damned if you don't, really has been eaten away at me for about 10 days now. And I keep thinking, well, why bother? If it was a good idea once, but then everything else came along and blew your idea out of the water, <clears throat> most people just quit. And if you can't get the firing going again, then you can accept that as normal, but that is the surest, surest sign of defeat. And most people don't navigate here, but occasionally we all get caught. And if you can kind of sense what time it is in your life right now, where are you at this point? Um, to me, it's harvest time. It's thank you time from now to Christmas. I just really try to touch my old relationships and remind them that it's coming up on thank you time. It's also a really good time to be practical about what's going on, the satisfaction that you have in your life and how worthwhile it is. Where's your head? Where's your heart? Where's your soul? How can you make things work better? and a constant attention to that. And I think that's what we do when we get together each week. That's what I'm looking for all the time is a way to help you do a better job this week than you did last. And then up the ante the next week after that. Keeping in the directions of your dreams is such a huge, huge issue. And if you can sense the potential and opportunity that surrounds custom engraving around Christmas time, you have to realize that if you've not ever done Christmas gifts before, maybe it's time you start looking at this opportunity right now because of all the times of the year that you can reach out and connect people with each other in their lives, it's at that Christmas holiday period of time. And when they can see that you can do these custom personalized gifts, there's just amazing the results. And I'm always startled when I don't see a lot more activity between now and Christmas. 
with your custom personalization accounts. There's no question that everything in life has a two-edged sword. We're constantly faced with opportunity, but also faced with the dilemma of the things in the way that make it difficult to pull that opportunity into your life. All of us right wing people are so easily distracted, it's just scary. I've got to be the president of this club. I can be going along in one minute, and the next minute I'm just all over something new completely. And I have to chain that side of my life down constantly to try and keep myself from getting in a position where I'm not getting done the things that need to be done. I'm just finishing a big order for the university right now and getting those 30 pieces of crystal etched has been just one little funny little problem after another and I have had to really stay on it, especially through this last weekend, just hit it and hit it. I haven't had to work hard, but I've had to go at it really consistently. And it, sometimes, since it's quite a big order, it's you just can't take it lightly. You have to really get in there and make it an all or nothing kind of, kind of a situation. Uh, as I've moved into this eighth season of shows, I've addressed this kind of concept before, but I'm going to make it a regular part of each fall now to do the Mirror, Mirror on the Wall series. Because it seems to me that our biggest problem for most of us is this uh, subtle thing about who we really might could be and what really are the problems. If we're measuring ourselves that it's this problem or this excuse or this reasoning that is involved or in somebody else's control, not our own, then between now and next year wouldn't it be a good time to try and work on that? to see if we can't more or less solve those same issues and pull that advantage into our own individual life. Here's the deal. Cooperate with me and I'll use good boy drill. Jerk me around and you get this. <laughs> I'm, I'm designing a bad boy drill right now, guys. One more drill. I, got, I just couldn't resist when I saw that on the web. If you face some tough decisions, then what? It's it's one thing to fix things in your life when it's ordinary, and it's quite another to really look carefully at the toughest decisions, those things that are just challenging as hell. They are a two-edged sword. On one hand, it's this way, and on the other hand, it's another way. How then do you handle that? Don't let other opinions mess with your future. And the fear of being wrong is what paralyzes too many people. We don't want to have gone down the pathway and then find out that we've used the wrong glue on 30 pieces of crystal. Because then i got to go back and rewash all the patterns and get new glue and come back at it all over again. And I'm at the point now where I don't fear that anymore. But I should have thought of that as I was even entering into the project. And so we really don't always see what's coming. And if we have the possibility that someone else would ridicule us or our, our mistakes or our potential problems, and we back off because of that ridicule, well, we just cannot let that happen. Just cannot. I am confident that no one in our circle would ever come along and give you a bad time for what you're trying to accomplish. But I wanted to bring up Tam tonight has been on the phones now helping our network for 30 years. And you just have to guess the phone call range that she's had. In that period of time, I, we used to sit and talk sometimes with her and Carol and Gloria of the support staff at the company of what kind of calls they had had and the really exotic ones that they would get literally to the point of, I've been divorced, now I'm getting married, now I'm getting divorced again, uh, attempted suicide a couple of times. I mean, we have had everybody because that's a free 800 number phone call they'll pick up that phone call and call Tamari because we're the kind of company, the kind of circle that will interact with people that are caught in those in difficult circumstances. And so when we 
when we promised you that your kit would be successful, you could be successful with the system, you can imagine the kind of phone calls that we get back when they've invested and then they find out that it's work. There are people who all they hear at the front end of, of opportunity is the potential. They don't, they don't sense the work level or the practice level or the participation level that success requires. And I always have, I've admired Carol, Tammy, and Gloria so much for how well they handle people who literally finally bump into the fact that they really, it's up to them to make it work. And I don't know of any other opportunity that's any different than that. If you're reacting, however, because of what you think somebody else might think, then we've got to get over that. And that's the subject that I most want to zero in on tonight for you. Um, if you're doing what you're doing for your own individual benefit, then what someone else might think really shouldn't be a part of your thinking at all. It just is not wise to live your life when others can influence your degree of success by their own reaction to what you're doing. That's just such a terrible way to go at it. And when these good ideas come to you, I think they do come to each of us. And when they show up, we're supposed to do something with them. We're supposed to try. And I've explained over my years several of the things that were great ideas that came along that I didn't go after that later on, oh, I wish I had. But I have gone after enough of them in my lifetime that I'm pretty comfortable now. I love a challenge anymore. I've talked often about the moment when I ran into Kevin Wynn. This pen and ink drawing of his fish was on the cover of the Utah Fishing Proclamation in 1989. I remember the moment exactly. Walking into Smith's Foods King, the grocery store, and there's the Fishing Proclamation sitting there with Kevin's picture. And the first thought that hit me was, oh, my hell, wouldn't that look great engraved on glass? Now, I've used this in my travel and train class how many years now? <laughs> A long time. But I've kept that influencing my life and my thinking now since 1989. And there's a way that I've kept that active in my life. In 1981, I carved this pattern over a mistake on a gun stock. My brother had a patient that had done a, a muzzleloader. And he'd screwed it up, and he asked me to try and save it. And I had just found Meek, James Meek's engraving book and this pen and ink drawing of that grizzly bear is in it. And I just rendered that over the, the messed up spot that Pope had done on his gun. And I've kept this engraving and this concept, this artwork, alive in my life as well for a very long time. This pattern I was asked to engrave on the side window of a pickup for my neighbor. And then he was so thrilled with that, I did one on one window and one on the other window down by the door lock. And then he asked me to put this fighting bull elk in the middle of the back window. And that was right at the time when I was, I was set up the company. It started the company in September 12th of 1983. And this was all happening right around here, hunting season of that particular year. And I've kept them involved in my life now since 1983. When you've got concepts that seem to be meaningful to you, stuff that comes along, and it's that good idea feeling, I maintain that everyone can sense it. When it happens and it just feels so good, then it's up to us to keep that involved in our lives make it significant for some reason. When a story comes along in your life that helps you get through tough times or help you make decisions, then that's what you start to package and then that's what you start to share with the world. This was an artist from Montana that has since passed away. 
And all I did was, I didn't even have the stencil film in those days. I just taped that in the back window of the pickup, and then I took a little diamond and went up in there and started drawing it out. And I'm afraid it wasn't very good in those days, but it was sure good enough to light his fire. And it began to involve so many other people, and all I did was just stay with it, keep that thread of interest going. When you can find concepts and ideas like this that come along and then really start to light your fire, I think it behooves you to come back to it and come back to it and come back to it. It, it will build your degree of confidence. It will help you to realize just how far you've come. I remember when Craig started in on this peacock. This went in an $8 million uh, home this new, uh, new building on a home here in Utah Valley. It's in the kitchen of that, that edition. And when we watch this thing start to shape up and come kind of turn out, oh my Lord, he did such a magnificent job of painting and rendering and finishing it. But I remember when he sat outside and whacked it into shape. And when you realize what, what he accomplished, I know flat out, you could ask Craig to this day, he remembers exactly this process of growing through here and producing this. But guess who grew the most? Him. And then if you carry that and consistently nudge that forward, uh, I can't tell you how many times we would have our artists come into the drawing class and would take the occasion to try and render render these from different angles and different lighting and try and get the sense of what was really going on. And this was a quick draw. This is one that Craig banged out in a hurry. And when he could sense the things he liked about what he accomplished, look at that little bit of light that hit that top rim of his glasses right there. Now when you can do some of these things that really start to enhance what you're playing with. The contrast between the darkest dark and the lightest light is what really starts to make things dramatic and makes it improve. But as I've watched, and I brag about Craig a lot, but I've never met anybody who so thoroughly practices what he preaches. The guy is consistently working on his craft. He makes the investment every day to enhance his skills. And that, to me, is more than anything else. The one thing that you just cannot ignore is that it takes that, that kind of an effort to stay with what you enjoy the most, what part of your art, your craft, your life, your business, come hell or high water, and not allow something like uh, damned if I do and damned if I don't to trap your thinking. You just cannot let yourself get into that position. I remember when we were started to dream of how much impact a drill would have on the RV industry. And I think it's still yet to come. Yeah, you take that drill and pull into an RV park. We went down to Utah Lake and pulled into the RV park down there and put the awning out and set up a table and cranked up the drill. And we had a hell of a time even even getting the photographs done because so many people were so interested that were already at the park. And Dennis was just getting ready to retire from the telephone company. He'd worked for Bob Ma Bell for years, getting ready to retire and had a motorhome already and this was his motorhome. And what he wanted to do was use that to go down the road with the little. Now these kinds of moments when they show up and you don't give them the attention that they deserve you can't sense there's a ton of potential right here. Uh, nah, I don't know how to help you. you. You just got to know that when when the moment raises the hair on the back of your neck, uh, that's the very time to work extra hard. Not that the crosshairs of eternity have lined up on you finally and it's all going to drop right in your lap. It's now's the time to dig in even more. And Dennis was fortunately that kind of person. He just could not chain him down. We went on a couple of trips together, and what a grand guy. What a fun person to be involved with. 
and he just absolutely ate up everything that was going on at the time and started to play with it even more. And then all of a sudden, this Tom and Mary Lou McGee found him, and they were writing a book about RVing for fun and profit, and they put an article, a whole article in this book, and then they sold the book. They sold it for years, and in it, the story about Dennis had this cartoon, Protect Your Investments, Engrave It, Engrave Glass, Wood, Metals, and Plastics. George, you remember the fellow back in Phoenix who wanted all his things engraved with his initials? He's back with his friends and their friends and their friends. And it was so fun to watch Dennis go through these hoops to get this put into place, to have a major national publication that was sold for years, put things underneath his life and move his life forward. And you just can't buy this kind of exposure. You just can't. So as soon as that book got finished and was starting to come out, guess whose full-page ad was on the, <laughs> the rear cover of the book? We just jumped all over that one. And it was a lot of fun from then on. We had such a good time with it. When you have this kind of occasion, uh, I'm going to do a whole show about this particular order of sandblasting that I've done. It's a $4,200 order, which is more, more than enough to buy the entire system and get yourself started, and it's just a one-thing order. And most of the time when I do the thank you crystals, that's the kind of range that the orders come in. And when you can see this kind of potential, uh, this kid worked for 7-Eleven stores, and this was his daughter's first birthday. And when he found out that our member could do the sandblasting and put this graphic image on a mirror tile for him, on a big mirror, he went clear crazy. And it ended up just about everybody in his family wanted one too. And when you can take something like this and learn how to render this in a halftone, our sandblaster will handle the kind of details that's pretty unusual. And yes, you have to learn. You have to learn how to make the pattern. You have to learn how to transfer it to the photoresist. And you have to learn how to blast it. But my gosh, what kind of potential there is underneath it when you can do these custom kind of things that almost no one else around you can do. Psycho Cybernetics has been out there a long time. And I ran into it when I was first heading into dental school. And Maxwell Maltz was a plastic surgeon. And it really changed my thinking. The reading of this particular book helped me with what I was after personally. What did I most want out of my own individual life? And the thing that triggered his doing of this book was how people would come in and ask for a nose job or get their cheeks fixed or have their face facial plastic surgery done. And he says some even with very little change, were just thrilled with what he had done for them, and that changed their life. Or some he didn't make major changes, and they couldn't see that they'd had any change at all. And so he wrote the book from the idea that right here is where we do all our battling. Right here is where our lack of personal confidence is. And, and as much as I try to help this person in the network, I've actually coached them for quite a long time, and I, I just can't change the thinking. There's a bottom line impact here of something in their life has moved them to the point that they, they just almost can't think positive thoughts about themselves for whatever reason, and they literally hold themselves back. I've kept this picture in my journal for a very long time. I've shown it consistently in my shows now for the last eight years, but I've used it for 30, 35 years. This image to me is what I like the most. If I could be out playing in a canoe and messing around with a camera and visiting with you guys under such great circumstances, this is the one time in my life that I really do enjoy a lot. And when you can keep those kinds of thoughts and those kinds of thinking and feelings that are good ones 
around you, then I think you start to ward off the side that would trap you, the side that would hold you back. When I see an ad in a magazine like this, make the place you live the place you love. I bought the whole damn magazine just so I could tear out that one page and put it in my journal. And every time I flip that page over and see this picture again, I get a feeling deep inside that reinforces what I've tried to build and do in my life. It, it's one thing to have all the stuff that comes along that interferes with your life and challenging to you, but if you don't allow what you enjoy the most to overpower those negative circumstances, then you, you're not going to be able to live your life in a position that you probably would wish you could. I've kept this picture in my uh, journal as well. I was over uh, just below the base of Timpanogos one day, and there was a family running around in this old school bus. And they had reconverted it, and I could see that the family. So I pulled over to the side here and just kind of kept an eye on them for a little while. And the parents were having their kids and them live in the school bus. Now, I don't know what motivated them to get them to that point. I've never seen them again. But I just looked at that circumstance and thought, oh, my good Lord, maybe that's an okay thing to bring your children up in this situation. But I really struggle with those kinds of choices and those kinds of decisions. Because the more you isolate yourself from humanity, the more challenging things get in the long run. Craig is one of his favorite things in his life is the chickadees. And he did a series of them because he enjoyed them. He studied them aggressively, did several models and did several classes and finally put produced some for himself. This one is probably Tamari's favorite carving. It's a black chap cap chickadee on a pine cone. And it's just such a clever way to do it. And it was such a dramatic, good-looking piece. And I just loved it. And I thought, well, I'm going to go see if I can't learn how to do that as well. And I had not done anything like this before. But several of us jumped into a class with Craig. And then he started to show us what to do and how to do it. And we all took his study model and learned to render that and then learned how to paint that and produce it in our in our own class. And I, I always have admired those who are willing to share what they've then learned how to do. You guys know that not everyone is willing to share what they've learned how to do. But boy, in our circle, this is just becoming a dominant thing. And when we can have the occasion where Clyde's been a member for a long time and it was so fun to watch him. He's gone on now and has competed in many of the major bird carving competitions. He's won the California show and now retired and playing and having a good time with his life. And when you can sense that this little piece right here, you could build an entire life around just doing black chap cap chickadees. They're just some of the most charming birds on the planet and learning how to render them and learning how to do it and then learning how to share what you've learned how to do is what has really put the wind underneath Craig Holmes' sails. Uh, I was going to call and have Tammy remind me who this woman is because I cannot remember. I'm embarrassed. I can't remember her name right now. <clears throat> She's from Hawaii. She builds her own harps. She carves and does ivory inlay on her harps. Came over and had Craig and Keith teach her how to do the ivory inlay. And then she plays for everyone in hospice. Somebody's getting ready to die. She will just show up and for several days will do nothing but play and sing Hawaiian healing kind of songs. And she showed up on a Friday. This was a Friday, the last day of one of my travel and train courses. And we spent the afternoon with Ralph and his wife 
from California, and we all sang together, and we had easily one of the most inspiring times I've ever had at the Cohen Studio. And when I see people that have developed their skill level to this point, that she's learned what to do and how to do it to build this kind of an instrument, and then she learned how to carve and embellish it even more. She was so thrilled when she found out that that's what the high-speed carving, power carving could do and ran into Craig and Keith. And when you can make that your life, make that your living, then all of a sudden these other kinds of occasions, there's a million ways to say thank you for helping me with my life. And everything we do in the personalization custom market is exactly from that same perspective. This little piece of glass crystal, this is optical grade crystal. It's extremely good looking stuff, but it's fairly inexpensive. And yet it allows you to reach into other people's lives in ways that perhaps you're not now using that we really might ought to consider it. So right this moment tonight, look at where your head and your heart and your soul are. How determined are you or do you let this damned if you do, damned if you don't trap bind your future and hold you back? Because there just cannot be anything you can't overcome. There's a way to up and over and around and through everything that holds you back in your life. And you've just got to have faith in the fact that you can find a way. I watched my sister and her husband, Chris, struggle with their disabilities uh, so much. So it's just unbelievable to me, both in their marriage, but as individually. They're so good with each other. But if they have one characteristic they've acquired in this whole 60 years of being disabled, and needing so much help in their life, it's the fact that there is always a way. There is always a way to solve every problem that comes around you. Just watch for these moments, watch for these times and these little tiny sequences that start out when I was engraving at the Winter National Drag Races in California and Pomona, and Dick Deloche, the editor of Truckin' Magazine, walked up was watching me engrave right over my shoulder and I just turned to him I says you like what I'm doing and he says sir he says I have done everything with the custom automotive world that can be done for my entire life and I never dreamed ever that I would see anything done on a car that hadn't already been done and then here you are <laughs> engraving out of last and he says, how about I write a story about you? I'm the editor of Truckin' Magazine. Now, if you can't sense the potential what he was really talking about, and I had no clue at that point what the hammer, what the pressure that uh, Truckin' Magazine had in the, in the custom marketplace of cars. But the second this article was only one page, but the second it came out, it just blew the socks off my phone number. And that kind of thing, when you're looking for it and you're expecting it, then you say, well, if I go in one direction, that's one thing. But if I take it in another direction, what I'm after is the most optimum position I could possibly consider and come up with. I've met most of you this very way. Just about every one of you can trace back to your connections, at least with me at a show or an event. I can't tell you how many I've done, but I loved going out every damn time because I was going to get to meet you. And if you'll just sense that same power and that same position in your own life, you don't have to go out and promote Lou Jensen and Proper Hobbies. You go out and promote you. There's no reason that you can't be involved with other people in the same kind of circumstance. The drill is the most unique tool on the face of the earth, and most of humanity still does not even know what we've got yet. So plan as a part of your, your yearly plan. Mix some more of this public exposure thing into your life. 
there has to be ways that you can begin to learn off of what we have accomplished as a company in 30 years. There's got to be a way for you individually to do similar kinds of things. That moment right there when there's a plastic tube and a dental turbine being sitting right there on my laboratory desk, getting ready to be sent out to be repaired. I picked the two up and slid the turbine in the end of that plastic tube and held it up and I went, bingo. What the world needs is a straight design high speed handpiece. Now I could have not done anything with that thought. I could have just let the thought wither away or ignored it for a long time, but I would not take no for an answer. I felt every ounce of me at that very moment, I can remember exactly when I was standing there, that moment that really said, this is, I got to pursue this. And then you pursue it from then on. That's what gives you confidence to overcome whatever anyone else might think. Because damned if you do and damned if you don't implies that somebody else is helping you make your decisions. You cannot allow the opinion of somebody else to mess with where you're trying to take your life. Figure out what you're most unique about you and then grow that and develop a package around that something unique and then learn to share and trade it with the world. What a great way to go. I don't know of anything better than that. I built Soulworthy for about 50 really important reasons. And I figured that I would be involved with that out there at my parents' home for quite a long time while my mother was, I was caring for my mom, except she passed away a little quicker than I thought she might. But I didn't build it for anybody else. I built it for my own feeling, my own heart and soul. Because I'd been planning it and working toward that for a very, very long time. And that will also now continue with me from now on. You don't have to have a studio like this at this point. You take whatever you've got, but figure on your plans to grow into something of some substance where you can make that business efforts you're now doing, produce yourself a space, a sacred space to grow old in and use your creativity in. Everything that matters to me is in soul Up and out and in my life in a way that I just absolutely love it. Ever since good, having a good time as my job came along, I have talked about it and promoted it and shared it clear since the day I was in Lake Tahoe trying to decide whether to do this or whether to be a dentist. And you want to talk about a damned if you do and damned if you don't moment. That was the burner. The whole world thought I'd lost my ever-loving marbles, marbles for going in the direction that I've gone. But, oh my God, there's no dentist had more fun than me. <laughs> None. And it was because I stuck to my guns. Now, most of the stuff I've shown you tonight and talked about are really important pages and elements of my personal journey. Whenever I'm struggling, whenever I'm having things that aren't working out really well, I go back to that journal and it's like a guidepost. It's like a lighthouse for the direction that I should keep going because I love so much what I'm now doing. The things that you don't like about your life are the things that you want to overcome and get past, get around, get through, get over. And you really have to discover what you like best about yourself and then do that. That solves all the problems. And whenever I hang up our masters in front of all of you, the reason that I think they've done so well in every case They've done with their lives what they most wanted to do. It's not something that somebody else has made the decision for them. Every one of them have taken their life in their own direction and succeeded with it to one degree or another. And what I've always tried to maintain that if each of these guys can do it, so can you. There's no reason that these are extraordinary people. 
they have accomplished extraordinary things in their own personal life, but the master's program is designed to just then launch the rest of their life's effort to get you to a point where you focused your individual capacity and your skills to the point the world begins to recognize who you are and put that together with what you've done. And when you can see what Mel's done, what Ron's done, what Joni's done, what Marilyn's done, what Denny's done, what Tamara's done, these individuals to me represent the best in life that you can do. If you've seen and noticed what Brian Beatty has posted and his trip to Bulgaria, he just had his grand opening last week and put some of that up. I don't know if you've been able to get the web light lit up tonight, Brian, but damn, I'm proud of you, buddy. You really have accomplished a lot. And Brian is one of the people that just will not, not let damned if you do, damned if you don't trap him. He has now gotten to the point where he really does understand what it takes to get himself up and over and around and through any circumstance and not allow anybody else to make those really important decisions. I think your support and your participation with the INE might in the long run be one of the better tools that has ever been developed for helping artists discover they have some ability develop that ability, master something, get really, really good at something, and then learn to trade that in the world in the world marketplace. Uh, eventually, I think Handmade Crusade really is going to grow into something that is magnificent. And if you can realize that doing that, then together we actually accomplish more than we might have accomplished on our own. Well, all righty, troops. What I would like to talk about now is your own individual circumstances on occasions where you have been able to get past what other people think and how you've managed that so that you've got a chance of doing this kind of stuff with your life. Ron, can you lead off, buddy? Uh, yeah, I, can you guys see me and hear me? Yep, gotcha. Okay, I can't see any of you. Uh, we were having storms here, so I lost video, and but um, I'm still on. Um, I, I don't know what keeps me going, uh, and that never give up thing. Uh, I do know that sometimes your hardest critics can be your own family members and try to steal stuff away from you. But um, I think some of it's what Mel says, you know, tell me I can't tell me I can't do something and then just hold my cup of coffee and watch me, you know. Um, the other thing is when I always started to do something and it goes back to to years ago when I, I started doing photography work, I didn't know a thing. But I picked up the camera, I picked up books, I, I talked to people. And I learned how to take wedding photos, and I got hired as a wedding photographer. And then I started doing my own darkroom work. I didn't know how to batch process prints, but I listened to some people. They were kind enough to give me some information, and I started doing my own color processing. Um, and it started with everything I ever did. You know, uh, it's uh, I just. Uh, if I wanted to do something, I did it, and if I just didn't care if other people said I couldn't do it. I just went on and did it, and um, I, I I don't know. I, I I can't put a finger on what makes me that way, but I think um, everyone who is successful has that same type of drive. They, you know, it's like, you know, I'm just going to do it. I don't care what you say, and. Um, I, I just I go on from there. Isn't you know, it interesting things? how interesting Ron how some people they get the critique and they just fold, they just can't touch it again, and they walk away. 
and other people get a little critique and they just go you want to bet and so on one person it collapses their hopes and their dreams and another person it actually puts the fire <laughs> underneath them to help you succeed and I just don't know when when that comes along what makes that difference I I don't know if you know if, when I was doing certain stuff you know my my mother said to me and it, she was one that probably tried to steal dreams from me without her realizing it she says well what makes you think you could succeed in business you know running running a business and I said because Uncle Harry did it now my Uncle Harry was like the black sheep of the family um, but he started sweeping floors I, I, there was a family rift that went on but that's no, not here or there but he started sweeping floors at a shoe factory in Schuylkill Haven Pennsylvania and he went on to own the shoe factory uh, became a multi-millionaire and later the shoe, the shoe factory was bought by Stride Right and um, you know he started a a foundation where he gives money uh, uh, to uh, kids going to school and, and stuff like that. But I, I I said to her, I said, you know, Uncle Harry did it. I guess I can do it too. Yeah. And um, I only met him twice in my life. But uh, the story of him starting sweeping floors, somebody in my own family, and went on to, to be a success, I just felt if he can do it, I can do it. I guess I, that, that was part of it with me. If you find that pattern, I uh, just don't see how you can be stopped. But it's that hanging in there when someone turns up the burner to the point they're just melding this one member of the network in the ground, and I've got to find a way to keep him going, and yet I just don't quite know what buttons to push. Mel? Yeah. Never, never got the sense that anybody's been able to squash your dreams or plans. Mm, no, not really. <laughs> not once I got out away from uh, living in my folks' house. Yeah. You know, because no matter what, what I did with, oh man, if I didn't do it his way, it was wrong. Really. Oh yeah, but I learned a lot. So it's you know just, <laughs> but I still had to do it my way. <laughs> well, maybe that helped you get that kind of an attitude going. Though. Maybe that was actually. Well, it could be. Could be. It, and uh, <laughs> I've done some things with this drill that. Uh, I thought was kind of unique and creative. Yes, and yes you have. <laughs> then you come along and say, well, you really shouldn't use it on this uh, type of material. <laughs> oh, really? Hmm. Amazing, Damn, amazing how that worked out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I just did, and it turned out great. So. It turned out great. <laughs> <laughs> well, Okay. <laughs> I'll still do it. <laughs> so the confidence that you gain, I, it can't come from someone else, can it? It has to be you that can hatches it's, that or launches it's it. It's got to come from within and being able to um, adapt to your situation and like the, the Marines say, over, adapt, overcome, and conquer, or whatever they call it. Yeah. yeah. But, um, it's you that has to come up with the answers. Yeah, answers. in Bud's training, it was, uh, you had an out, and that was ring the bell. I never rang the bell. <laughs> never thought about it. Why should I? Yeah. <laughs> My buddies here weren't. <laughs> it just live in the moment and keep going, one foot in front of the next, because life changes everything. You have trials and tribulations that come up, and stumbling blocks and hurdles that you got to figure out how to get over, around, through, under, whatever on the 
to get to the other side and you just do it. You can't throw your hands up and say, well, hell, I'll quit. I just sit right here. Somebody's got to come and get me. Yeah. It doesn't work that way. Never, ever has. You have to stand up and put your gloves on, roll your sleeves up, go to work. I mean, I've had some extremely high points in my life, and I've had some pretty devastating low points that, uh, well, okay, you pick yourself up by your bootstraps and you <laughs> just keep going. Keep going. Let's keep going. Tan receivers, you don't have any problems in your life at all, dear, but would you bother to comment on what we've been talking about tonight? <laughs> any problems, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I agree. My, my biggest motto is keep moving forward because you can't go back. You can learn from the past, but you just have to keep moving forward. And I think that I think that the negativity that might come from family and friends about what you're doing to me is a motivator. It's, I, I, you tell me I can't. I tell you I can. Bingo. That's exactly what I wanted tonight. Because that's the thing. If what someone else says destroys you or emotionally plows you in the ground, you don't have a chance. It has to somehow. What's the difference? I mean, you and Ed have been through some really, really rough times, Tammy. I'm aware of a lot of it, not all of it, but you've had such a tough go, and yet, my hell, you two know how to hang in there like anybody I've ever met and I sit and go well every master in the program that's what I watch for is the kind of hang in there-ness you have and your willingness to share your your lifting or your support of someone else's hopes that's the whole thing isn't it it is and if if you want it you'll do it yeah that's the only thing I can say and it doesn't really matter who says you can or who says you can't if you want it you have to want it it has to come here. You've got to find your dream, your fire. If it's not a true fire, it's not going to happen. It won't sustain. Yeah. If it's not cooking you from the inside out, you probably are just doing it for the wrong reasons. And it won't sustain. Excellent. Ooh, good points. Nicholas, you're a hanger in there as well. And I really have admired over your years how you go about your doing. You're very methodical with your your efforts, your art, your career, your reputation, everything, but you're also a really supportive kind of individual. Where does that keep going thing come from inside of you? You've been at it for quite a while now. I guess part of it is the, the support of the others uh, in this group. I mean, that's one of the things that I've really enjoyed participating in the webinars for all these years is the others uh, being there also and uh, asking questions, answering questions, um, learning from them. So the mixture is really a helpful entity, isn't it? When it you're is dealing with your own struggles. Uh, sounds to me like over the years of our seminars especially, our problems are so similar it's just scary at times. <laughs> the things we face and the answers that we're looking for can come from this same circle right here. And it's also helped my wife's been very supportive and um, makes life easier. Yeah, that's that's a huge, huge plus. Absolutely, positively. Lance, you're on the curve of accomplishing a lot this last couple of years, especially. How you've got to have had a lot of occasions where people question your sanity about doing what you're doing, haven't you? Well, a little bit, but what I uh, I always figure that. I'm the only one that can give the uh, give permission for these whatever these people say to affect me. So, if whatever they're going to say will be a positive, negative, 
I'm the one that's either going to take it or not. And I, uh, there's very few people that I'm going to listen to as far as if they have any ideas or stuff. And they're people in the um, in the network. They're people that I know that are you know businessmen that I work with. I got a lot of friends that say, God, what are you doing that for? Well, they're still my friends, but I don't listen to them when it comes to business. <laughs> I just listen to them. But, yeah, you want a cold yeah. beer? Sure. Past yeah, that, right. you know, I'll, I'll do my own thing. And uh, you just got to kind of go on, not on your own, you know, grab whatever information you can glean from some, even somebody's negative comment. You, you can maybe glean something out of that. Maybe it's uh, something that really has one little grain that uh, you can learn from. But don't let it affect you. I mean, you have already know where you want to go. <laughs> do you sense that you have a little box full of confidence now that you didn't have before? Yeah. You see that? I mean, I think I can very positively say that all of us could go away. This whole thing, the company, the everything just go away. And Lance left totally on his own. You would still pursue what you're into now. Definitely. Absolutely. Definitely. There is nothing now that could back Lance off. And that's, I, I try and help to that point. From that point on, I think it's your job to do with your life whatever you dream of doing. That's but basically that, the starting blocks. <laughs> From then on, that's where we stages starts. are so easy to have somebody blow you out of the damn water or your troubles, your circumstances get this problem happens to you, that problem's happened to you. Um, when I lost my daughter, I thought the whole world had collapsed. But what got me through it was my circle of alliances and my hopes and dreams that I have carried for 35 years, 40 years now. And those things tend to offset the worst. The worst is because what I'm driving at tonight is the things that blow you out of the water, things that literally bring you to a screeching halt. And that just cannot happen when you're chasing the dream. You just got to have something worth living for, don't you? Yeah. Hiccups happen, but you keep moving. Yeah. Keep moving. And then maybe that very thing that was the hardest for you will end up being your your best thing in your life. Maybe. Sound like that? I like How's that. It? Keep moving forward. You know, that's that Walt Disney uh, quote that uh, uh, you just mentioned. That's that's cool. I like that one. I got to keep thinking of that one. Dr. Lou. There. Fred, Nick. Who was talking? I didn't get it. It was me, but uh, it looked like you had froze on the screen. No, no, I just had pulled up Jay. I'm going to bug Jay now for a minute and ask him. He's got a lot of opportunities starting to show up in his life, and it's got to be a lot of fun for you, Jay, to have been through such a struggle for these last few years and now find something you can really sink your teeth into. Oh, yeah, you know, and I do. I, I have so much, you know, fun with it. Some of it, you know, like I get ready to go do a show, and anybody that's ever packed up to go do you know, a show or an event, you know, they know the hassles of loading and unloading and setting up and tearing down and all that, you know. That's that's the bad part about it, but once I'm there and I'm set up, you know, and I'm talking to people, you know, I, I have just a blast with it, you know, and yeah. it really keeps me going. I like the events, number one, because I would meet new people. Uh, without that side of the business, we used to do it all with this magazine advertising. And then when I started to launch the shows and the show effort, that's where I got to meet you personally. And and you guys all know I love that moment. It's the very time in my life when I can put that drill in your hand for the first time and have it really turn you on. That's a quite a moment. That's not something you can get around easily. But just remember that. Remember that, how it worked for you in your own life. And whenever you get occasion to talk about the drill, try and have the circumstance where you can say, here, just hand it to them and say, sign your name on this little piece of mirror I've got here. Put a diamond in there, put the hand piece in their hand, and tell them to go ahead and write their name. And that little move alone is usually enough to really tweak people's curiosity. And it's my feeling that every one of you that have done something with this, you've got this innate 
thing in your head and your heart of being able to express yourself this way. Jay, your work is so, you're getting so good at it. It just tickles me clear to death. Your rendering, of, your rendering of that frying pan has just got to be one of the more fun damn things you've ever done. Yeah, that, that's why I just found myself another one, so I can start on it after the uh, <laughs> last couple of shows. <laughs> I don't know. You need to have one of those around to show off often, because it sure was, it sure was a fun piece. Well, you uh, keep going with it. Okay. You know, it's just like you know, you talk about you know things that back to saying you know I can remember even with my own family, you know my sister you know called me up one day and she's like, you know I know you got into this it's kind of a therapy for you and all that but your therapy's over why do you you know why do you keep messing with it you know why do you keep doing it? you know I'm not really seeing you doing a whole lot and I'm like yeah okay sis you know you know whatever you say you know and then I get off the phone and I'm thinking oh, wait a second. She she must have at least a dozen of my pieces hung up in her house. <laughs> and she brags about it every time somebody comes over, but she's telling me I ought to quit. You know, <laughs> something's crossed here somewhere. I don't know if it's me or if it's her, but you know, either way, you know, I'm damn still going to keep on doing what I'm doing. If you don't, yeah, <laughs> way, yeah absolutely. Yeah. That's a great story. You know, and and then some of these other opportunities that I'm kind of looking at right now and. And working on, you know, it's like, you know, why give up now? I've got a chance to help other people. Yeah. You know, That's and make things, real, be make things better for, you know, for a bunch of other people. So the real satisfaction is when it starts to move into that category. That's just the, all there is to it, as far as I'm concerned. Isn't that how it's been for you, Joni, over the years? When people look at your work and they collect your work, have a piece of your work, and you can tell a sense of admiration. And appreciation isn't that worth all it takes to learn and yes. produce that stuff? Did it one more time. There you go. Now you're on. Uh, my my upbringing from the, from the beginning is I wasn't supposed to be here, mm. and so my mother died when I was a year old, and then my father went about his business. Well, so consequently, my grandmother, my German grandmother, had, was raising me, and she was strict. And you had to do what you were supposed to do, and that's all there was to it. And she made me a very stubborn person. When it comes down to, uh, I'm not going to quit. i got to do it. I've got to do it. And it, it's helped me in my lifetime. And I never realized that I did anything good in my art. I never knew how, really. I mean, I knew how, but I didn't know the technical part of it until I got older, and I suddenly realized, well, by gosh, I could go start going to these little classes. And one thing led to another, and after that, I was I made up my mind that I am going to stick with my art regardless what type of art I'm going to do. The one that gives me the most pleasure, that's what I'll do. But I yeah. won't give up. And it makes a big difference in my life. And then it begins to lead you. You see the results of you following things that you really like and you really enjoy. They lead you to what I think is that degree of confidence. It's, uh, you can't be around Craig and Keith and not sense this tremendous power they have about their own individual confidence in their ability to express whatever it is they're taking on. Mm -hmm. And they grow from that. And I, I've seen that in you, Joan. When you turn around and try and encourage someone else to do the same thing, to go after that interest, those threads of interest, that's a pretty powerful tool because you've done it. Yeah. You've done it your whole life long. I, I, it's, I don't know how to explain it, but I had to help. I had to do something like that. I had to become something within myself. And the way I was able to do that was with my faith and, 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 and my work, my artwork. And from there on, I just, right now, I, I'll never quit. I, yeah. I just won't. Yeah. I mean, I, then, <laughs> they may make me quit. When they show. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anything can make Jolie Beck quit. I really don't. And isn't that the common thread of the fabric of all of us? It's yes. the, right in the middle of what we talk about here why our participation. Most of you have stayed with the webinars 
regardless of how poor I was at the presentation or the, how bad the technology was or anything. We all sense some value here and we've stayed with it. And now it's becoming really productive. This is going to be a big deal down the road when all of you have your own impact this way. It's going to be an amazing thing to sit back and watch as I finish my career. I'm really, really excited about that. Well, How about you? Go ahead, Joni. The one thing that has really been great with you all is the fact that we all try to help each other. And I feel so sorry for Ron and Lance and, because if I run into a problem, I've got to have somebody to call. I've got a, I don't have any books here that's going to tell me. And they have been so good with me. And I really appreciate that. And it, it encourages me to go on. And there's going to come a day when they're going to have to come to me for help. <laughs> <laughs> and that is exactly what's going to happen. Uh, and technologically, we're all all bumpkins here. That's the part that we've really struggled with the most is how in the world do we make this new kind of technology work mm -hmm. so that we can support each other even better and it's we're getting better and better at it all the time. Even guys up in Wyoming, Robert, you can't, you can run but you can't hide anymore. We can reach you clear in Wyoming. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think for, for my life, um, for my circumstances since I was very young, I really, a couple things, I have to really adapt. And I, I met at my studio, it's called Soul Survival, because I had to survive in so many different circumstances. But one thing that kept me going was um, I was very self-motivated. And I don't know where all that came from, but I was, a lot, like you said, when people have commented, many times people will say, well, you can't do this, and but I knew I could. But I think the biggest lesson I learned, the only ones that really supported me in some of my artistic talent was my sister, who was with me for most of my life, and then obviously my current wife, Donna, which I really love. But I think what happens with me is I started to realize I was going with life with, the, let's say, the daily motions, you know. Yeah. I have to either raise a family, have income, and then I realized the older I, I got, I needed, like you just said earlier in your uh, your hangout, is that I needed to feed my soul and my heart. And I knew that portion of me was drying out. And that thread of interest, I would see things and I realized it was that art, you know, that artistic that I got to get back to and see what I could become good of. And I think that it hit me the hardest probably was around five years ago because the main thing I explained to you, Dr. Lou, is when I found you on the webinar, that started really to feed me. And like you said, with all the support from the members, you know. And um, I think the other thing that hit me finally is that for the first time, uh, especially if you remember my first engraving at Betty Booth, that was the first time I got recognized. And because I, I felt I had a story, I had somewhat of a relationship with people I was dealing with, and more importantly, since animals don't have a voice, I really wanted to connect with that. And I think that's where I'm, I will continue going forward as my primary thing. I, I think it shows up. I, yeah. it, the story's different. I was putting yeah. the names of our masters up for the show tonight and putting yeah. that list up. and. I made note of, of Tamara, and I made note of Ron, mm -hmm. and I made note of Nick and Mel and Joni. But all they've done is very consistently focus and go after what is their own individual passion. I don't remember a single case where I've said, hey, I think you should do just this. I can spot it sometimes. I can see opportunities sometimes before you can when, because of my background and experience because I'm watching for that kind of thing. But most don't believe they have anything they can trade or sell. Yeah. For a long time, we just feel like, well, I'm just me. I'm just ordinary me, and I'm going to hell you are. Nobody in this world's ordinary. If you can figure out how to package and sell your story, you'll do well. And that's what you're yeah. finding now. So it's going to be fun to watch, yeah. Robert. Thank you, Dr. Lou. You're doing great. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, there is something I wanted to tell you that just dawned on me. Uh, I had totally forgotten about this for many, many years. When I was a little girl, uh, across the street from me, there was this, on the second floor, 
there was this man that used to have a great big book that he did all his drawings and artwork in. But I didn't know those people, and I was too shy at that time to present myself. So I would climb the tree to get up to his roof and climb on his roof and look out, watch him do his work through his window. And then oh, one day yeah. he caught me and he looked at me. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a great you. story. I told you about that. That was a lot of fascination for you. That would be really funny. That's a cute, cute thought. You need to try and write that out as a little teaching moment. Yeah. One of the great moments, Joni. That's exactly the kind of story you want to try and turn into something you can then present to somebody else. Yeah. That's neat. And you're kind of the new kid on the block. But we enjoy having you jump in here now. You've been in several shows in the sequence, and we really appreciate you taking the time. And are you getting anything that might help you? Absolutely. In fact, uh, the one thing that, uh, you know, trying to get off the ground, uh, I've been turned down so many times, it just makes me more determined than, than ever to to actually get something going and, and uh, get the experience that everybody else is talking about. So, uh, you know, I'm uh, the, the more I get turned down, the harder it is for me to give it up. And it just makes me think of a new idea or try to, if I can't go one way, I'll go another. Yeah. So Good that's, boy. that's what I'm trying to do now. And, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm trying to hang in there as best I can. Well, I sandblasted a thank you crystal block for you today. I've got to get this order delivered to BYU yet, so it'll be a couple more days, but I'll get it shipped down to you as soon as I can. Then what I want to do is sit down with all of you and explain to Ed how I think he ought to try and approach these people that are around him, because you, we all have access to certain entities, but if every one of you could have uh, the kind of business relationships to the point where you help one entity raise some money in your regional area where you live, some major university, some major church, large organizations. This is not small stuff. That I'm talking about bigger institutions. When you help them raise money, what you're really doing is, is connecting with the very kind of people that help sustain that entity. That connects you with that same caliber kind of person that is normally so damn hard to get to. I, I started helping BYU and that led to McLean Bybee, that led to Jack Solomon, that led to Stephen Covey. Uh, we raised 412 million bucks with that first go around and that's the kind of people that that will produce these same kind of orders for you. And they're perfect for our sandblasting system. Exactly the right thing to do. And, and I'm banging down some serious per hour money income kind of avenues. And for Ed especially, it's a way where you can just take the crystal. We'll have you go see if we can't help you pull in an order or two into your own life. And then I'll help you get the blasting done and we'll work something out to where we can get the order fulfilled. Invariably, okay. these kind of orders, they don't have a deadline on them. These are the kind of things that have a fairly decent production time attached so they're nothing no rush kind of thing which is something that we couldn't pull off so I'm excited I think it's gonna work for you we'll we'll nudge it and see what happens the main thing to keep in mind now is this devil come hell or high water damned if you do damned if you don't you just cannot back off I've been talking through this mirror mirror on the wall series about figuring out your next 10 things you ought to do. What are the next 10 things that are really high priority for you? And stay on those tasks and sort those out and get them in priority so you can get it one and then take on two and then take on three. And try and zero in on your productivity between now and Christmas. Because after Christmas, then we start planning the whole next year's function and have the shows move in that same direction for you. Now, I don't know if you even see it, but there's a pattern growing here. All I try and do is talk to Lou Jensen. My worst enemy is right between my own ears. 
And I think that's true for every one of us. And so my shows are basically Lou Jensen talking to Lou Jensen. I get a lot of phone calls and everybody says, you were talking right about me here. <laughs> and there is one person in the network who I'm praying dearly is listening tonight because this is the first time I've really sat back and gone, God, I don't know how to help. I've done, I've thrown every card on the table I can think of to keep this person going, and I still seem to be coming up short somehow. And so I'm hoping that what one of you said tonight might be the very thing that would help keep that individual going. It, it's always interesting to me. They have so much talent. They got so much ability. It's never the drill. It's never the carving, never the engraving, never the sandblasting, never the airbrushing. It's their attitude, their personal lack of confidence just blows me clear out of the water. I just, we've got to figure out a way to help people with that part. That's the, really the bone cruncher in this whole deal. Well, any other comments before we end tonight? Yeah, guys? Lou, I do. Yeah, I have Lou. one more. I, yeah. I forgot this, and, and uh, what, what I should do is I should send you some of the critiques I got from Ken Brown when I was doing my lessons for my certification. <laughs> if, that did dis if that didn't discourage me, nothing ever will. Wow. Yeah. There, Ken knows how to push the right buttons, doesn't he? And it, and it does. You either are crushed by it or you're motivated by it. And I think that's the difference we're talking about here tonight. If any of you are not masters in our program yet, uh, give me an email and I'll send you my, I've written it down. I've got the whole thing formulated now. And I'm trying to boil it into a position where when someone's new, they don't even know. All I'm doing here is hanging up the possibility in front of you. Um, the guys that have succeeded in, in becoming a master in our program, they all know that I think they understand exactly what's going on. It is a matter of you zeroing in on what you most desire and want anyway. And if we can help with that somehow, that's all the INE network is for, is to build some kind of pattern in here to help someone who doesn't have the confidence when they start to gradually grow that confidence and get past these things that are just usually blow most of humanity clear out of the water. You guys all represent that really well, so thank you tonight. We'll uh, see you tomorrow night. We'll get together and visit a little bit about our blogging efforts and our other activities, so if you can take some time and stop in tomorrow night, I should have my big order delivered by then, and I'll be in a lot better mood. <laughs> it's all done.